Using bands in your training is likely holding your growth back. Stick around and find out why. We back, Wolf Coaching here, soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf, and today we're talking about banded training. Why would banded training reduce your growth? Well, recent research has demonstrated the importance of lengthened training. In other words, performing training that is difficult at long muscle lengths, like for example, the very bottom of a squat. Why should you listen to me? Well, I actually conducted some of this research myself. And in brief, we found that when emphasizing the lengthened position, for example, by doing lengthened partials, you can increase your growth by up to 5-10%. to 10 You might say, well, why does a comparison of full range of motion to lengthen partials and all this long muscle length talk really matter here? How is this relevant to bands? Here's why it's relevant. When you use bands in pretty much any exercise, what happens, whether you use reverse banding or just regular banding, is that you make the bottom position, that stretched position at long muscle lengths, easier, and you make the shortened position, that's not as good for growth, harder. That's the opposite of what we want for growth. As I just mentioned, recent research has demonstrated the importance of making that lengthened position hard and actually reaching into that lengthened position. You can definitely reach that lengthened position with bands as well. It just won't be very hard and that's likely taking away part of the benefit of that lengthened position for hypertrophy. There is also a more practical argument. Specifically, using bands takes time. You have to set up the band. If you're reverse banding it, that's potentially even worse because then you have to slap on more plates, which takes more time, more warm-ups, and that's generally just a pretty poor use of your time for, in the end, not any additional hypertrophy. So I'm not sure why you'd do it. Now, anecdotally, some people say that using bands can help them with managing their pain. And if you have an injury and you find it really beneficial in terms of not getting as much pain during exercise, by all means, be my guest. But just be aware that it's likely holding your hypertrophy back. Now that I've said that though, I want to note a couple things. First, you might tell me, hold up, the reason I use bands is because, here's the science, I want to match the resistance curve of the exercise, namely how difficult is the exercise at different points throughout its range of motion, to how strong I am. And certain exercises have a pretty big mismatch, right? You can think of a dumbbell kickback, for example, where at the very start of the range of motion, you have no resistance, and then as you near lockout, there's the most resistance. In reality, most of your muscles are strongest somewhere around resting length, and so you kind of want to match that strength curve of yours with the resistance curve, and bands can help you modify that resistance curve during the exercise. And that won't lie to you. If you told me this five years ago, before I knew about some of the data around this, I would probably buy your shit up. So I would say, oh, that sounds like a really good idea, because we want to make each part of that range of motion as stimulating as possible. There's two issues with this. First, we actually have data suggesting that actually, we don't really want a perfect match between the strength curve of a muscle and the resistance curve of an exercise. Rather, we actually want to disproportionately emphasize the lengthened position, as I mentioned earlier, and bands accomplish the opposite of this. In other words, for most exercises for hypertrophy, you probably want to fail at the most lengthened position or as close to that lengthened position as you possibly can. As an extreme example, cable ladder raises may be better than dumbbell ladder raises. Because with a dumbbell ladder raise at the bottom, you essentially have no tension. You don't need to produce much force in order to be able to lift the weight. In that lengthened position, there's not a lot of tension. Whereas with cable ladder raises, you're able to A, get into a deeper position, and B, have to produce plenty of tension in that position and bands generally make your exercises look more like dumbbell ladder raises, where there's no tension at the bottom or not much tension. And here's the second issue with it. We don't have much direct data on trying to match the strength curve to the resistance curve of an exercise. We have one study, and this was performed by Stanley Zavsky and colleagues back in 2020, where they compared a program that didn't try to match strength curve and resistance curve for the biceps to one that tried to match the resistance curve of the curl exercise to the strength curve of the biceps. So if the argument that you want to match strength curve and resistance curve for hypertrophy was sound, in this study, you would see greater hypertrophy when doing so. Here's the issue. In this study, they didn't find a difference. In other words, the most direct data we have on matching strength curve and resistance curve doesn't actually support the use of this technique for hypertrophy. It's not going to hurt your gains, potentially, but it's not going to improve them. And in the case of banding exercises, it may very well hurt them because in this case specifically, you would be removing tension from that lengthened position that we pretty convincingly know at this point is pretty important for hypertrophy. And you might say, well, what about the evidence on bands directly, right? Like some people just use bands because it forces you to accelerate or what have you or other rationales for using bands for hypertrophy. Do we have any direct data on using bands during hypertrophy training? Unfortunately, we don't. 
The best we have is one study actually comparing unbanded versus banded training for strength. In this study, using bands didn't seem to result in more strength improvements than not using bands. In other words, unless you want to get really good at squatting with bands or benching with bands or what have you, using bands isn't going to help you bench more without bands. Generally, specificity applies, which means that if you want to get better at benching without bands, you should probably just bench without bands. Bands aren't this magical, colorful thing that's going to give you additional strength gains, and in all likelihood, it's probably hurting your hypertrophy as well. As I said, the two reasons I could potentially see someone using bands is one, if you have an injury and you find that it's a lot less painful when you use them, and two, if you just enjoy it. You know, it might hurt your results a little bit as far as hypertrophy is concerned, but if you enjoy it, more power to you, bro. We should all just do more of what we enjoy, you know what I mean? So on that note, I'm gonna go make some bad memes about evidence-based fitness, and I will see you guys in that next video. In the meantime, please comment, like, subscribe, pay my bills, Donate to me on PayPal, feed my cat, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!